We're going to be talking about marriage today. Uh -oh. My wife comes up here. My wife was Abby, if you don't know, and she's all excited school's going to start. I've been out of school for 40 years, and I still cringe, and I go into deep depression when, they, when she says, school's going to start. I look at the kids that are getting on the bus, and I said, man, I feel sorry for you. I know how you feel. Amen. What a great time of worship this morning. Thank you, singers, musicians. This month, the theme for July is family focuses. You know, I was thinking the other day about the scripture. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy might, and all thy strength. Now think about that. What in your life do you do with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? What do I do? Is it my job? Is it my family? Is it my fun things to do? Is it my house, my car, whatever it might be. I'm gonna tell a little bit, a little story here. When I was 14 years old, we had a house in Connecticut. It was a summer house and it was on a lake. We had a little boat and it was a 50 horse Merc motor. And it was fun and it went pretty quick, about 29 whole miles an hour. But my neighbor next door, Jack Herman, he had an 80 horse Johnson on his boat. But Jack's boat wouldn't run too well. So what Jack did is he rigged it so he could bypass the neutral safety switch. And he would have one of us, Jack would untie the boat and push it away from the dock. And he would look around and he would say, hit it. And one of us would open that little box, you'd reach in and pull that cord, and with every last bit of strength, energy, we would put our foot up on the motor well and on the engine, and with everything we had, we would just fall backwards. Against four cylinders, 125 pounds of, of uh, compression to start that motor. And when that motor would start, it would take off like a rocket in gear, and you'd get thrown into the back seat. It was quite, a, quite an enjoyment, because when you were 14, stuff like that is cool but we had to give every last bit of energy. It wasn't like pull starting a little chainsaw or a weed whacker. Every last bit of energy that we had, we had to put into that to get it to start. So when I think, what do I do today for God? Am I loving God with all my heart, all my soul, all my might, all thy strength? Everything I got, I have to give it to God. Every last bit of me. I can't leave anything for me. I'm not important. It's God's grace, God's will. It's the destination that God has called for me and for all of us to do, is to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I hope you like that little story. So from the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, it says, he answered and said unto them, now he was talking to the Pharisees, because the Pharisees just came to him, and asked him, is it lawful to put away your wife? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them from the beginning made them male and female? Male and female. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder. That's the theme for the month. Keeping God's commandments in marriage. That's the, the title of the message today. So last week, well, I'm going to go back to the uh, first of the month, since it's the whole month of the theme about marriage. Brother Amon spoke from Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 through 24. It says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. God gave the man a woman. Man gives the wife a house, and she turns it into a home. Man gives the wife food. She turns it into a meal. Man loves the wife. She gives him a child. Marriage, parenthood, family, unity with God. Thank you, Armand, for that message. Quite encouraging. Then Brother Jesse spoke on the 14th from the book of Ephesians, 
chapter 5, verse 24 and 25. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. The man wasn't looking for a wife, but God saw the need. Submitting to one another doesn't necessarily mean obeying and doing what you're told. Don't stay wrong. Submit to the Holy Ghost and grow, a God, grow in God. Change for each other. Beautiful message, Brother Jess. And then last week, Pastor Giebler, unfaithfully betrothed. From the book of Revelations, chapter 20, 21, verse 9 and 10. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he came, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Secure the relationship where we say, I do every day. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. We lay down our life for our wives. Christ laid down his, his life for us. We know how to push, push each other's red button. That was a good point, Pastor Giebler. But we have to know how to say, I'm sorry. Thank God. Thank God. So we're going to go back to the theme of the week, which is the same as the theme for the month. Matthew chapter 19. And Jesse... Reardon's going to come and read Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 32. Now, this may, be, may have something to do with the world's view of marriage. It could be to the LBGTQ community, but it's really the way God intended marriage to be and what he intended it not to be like. And I'm not here to sit in the seat of judgment and to condemn all those around, those that have been divorced or those who have their own view of, of marriage or whatever sin that's in their lives. But it's about the faithfulness of God and what God has required for us. And then Jesus was saying unto, unto the Pharisees, and he looked and he said, have ye not heard? Have ye not heard that he which created them in the beginning created male and female? Now, th probably today he would say, really? Or would he say to them, duh, because they already knew, but they were tempting Jesus and trying to catch him in his words. So, Jess, Brother Jess, if you would come up and read for us. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like, like an incorruptible man, to the birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore, God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to the dishonor of their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator." who is blessed forever, amen? For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use, that which is against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust towards one another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, 
covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are, n are worthy of death. Not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. Thank you, Brother Jess. If we can't talk about this in church, where can we talk about it? The schools won't teach it. It's not on the streets. We have to talk about it in church. So maybe I'm preaching to the choir today, maybe not. But we all need to know. And we all need to read the word of God and to know what God ordained when he called marriage, when he created man, the help meet for him, the marriage. Going back to Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto him, to them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. What God therefore hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful to know your truth, to know the marriage that we have, the, the bond between our wives us, and you, God. God, a marriage that is blessed of you is certain, certain prosperity, God, and we just are so thankful that you instructed us and taught us, and God, that you keep us every day, and you teach us how to work with our families, God, and, and to, to be great servants and to work together in unity. God, let nothing put us and divide us. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Pharisees wanted to know if it was okay to divorce for any reason. Now, I've heard many people say, well, I'm getting divorced because of irreconcilable differences. All marriage, everything is reconcil irreconcilable differences. My wife is completely different than me. There are so many times that I have to say to my wife, I need you to handle this situation for me, especially with my daughters. Because I'm not, maybe I'm not prayed up enough at that moment. Maybe I'm uh, too temperamental. I have a whole list of things of, of why I can do things wrong. But sometimes I need to depend on my wife to let her explain to the kids something. She's much more nurturing than I am. I'm just kind of uh, temperamental, uh, walk softly, carry a big stick or whatever it might be. But I need my wife to do things for me. She supports me. And you know what? My wife and I, even though we disagree on some things, we come together in the Holy Ghost, and we're all on the same page when it comes to God. You know, if they dig up our bodies thousands of years from now, they're going to look, and, they're gonna, and they would examine, and they would look at the bone structure, and they would say, male, female. Okay, the mummies, the archaeologists have, have dug up, forensics, you know, whatever it may be. God made us male and female, and we're different, irregardless of what society says, how society feels about it, reacts to it, and their version of marriage. God ordained marriage. God ordained marriage between a man and a woman. Thank God for that. The Bible says that a man will leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they both shall be one flesh. Thank God for that. From the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe, believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. John the Baptist came preaching, he said, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruits, meet for repentance. Every day we all have to repent. Every last one of us is wretched, vile sinners, and we all need to repent before God. We cannot be self-righteousness and say we are better and unlike anybody else. We all come to Jesus, filthy sinners, and we all leave blessed and safe and a new creature. Hallelujah to that. Thank God for that. Thank God. 
From the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, and verse 1, it says, In that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We'll eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Straight and narrow is the way. Straight and narrow is the way. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So we have to do marriage right in everything we do. It has to be blessed of God. It has to be sanctified of God. It can't just be our own way and our own thoughts and likenesses. It has to be God's way. We have to go before God. We have to pray with our spouse each and every day. We have to be righteous. We have to read the word. We have to fast. We have to pray. Whatever it takes, but we have to be holy in the sight of God to keep that unity together. It's not by chance that we stay together. It's because we're given the Holy Ghost the chance to rule in our lives, and we serve God. You know, many will say, Lord, Lord, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and done many wonderful works in thy name? And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So it doesn't matter what the world's opinion or how they want to do marriage. This is God's way, a man and a wife, a unity of the spirit. It is, it is inseparable. It is joined. It is blessed of God. And whether you come to church or not, you're still making that vow before God. More than anything else, you're making that vow before God. And we want to be saved. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 and in, in verse 13, Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So we don't, we don't commit fornication. We don't commit adultery because it's not for us. This is why we have a, a marriage, a family. Hebrews chapter 13, it says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge. So we have to be righteous with God. We don't want to go out there through several people, through the world, the way the world does it. This week, get divorced. Next week, look for someone new. Before they're even divorced, they're looking for a, a, new, a new mate, a new, a new future, whatever it might be. You know, sometimes, I, you know, I know a family that is getting divorced right now. But alcohol is the center of their life. They think, if I just get rid of this person, everything will go away. But their God is alcohol. They can't even see the forest through the, through the trees because they're, they're swimming in alcohol. The alcohol is what's dividing their marriage. It's not them not getting along. It's the alcohol. Then I try to tell them, and they just don't want to listen. They just think it's, it's them. They, uh, sometimes people think, the fulfilling of my life is my wife or she owes me, or I'm going to get divorced because my life hasn't been what I expected you to make it for me, or what she expected me to make it for her. But it's our, our life and our walk with God. It's our favor with God that blesses us. We come to Christ as lost, filthy, wretched, evil sinners, but we leave a new creature, a new creature. It says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, in Romans 10, 3, sorry about that, and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. So wives and husbands have to submit to each other, but we have to first submit to the righteousness of God. Repentance. Jesus cast out the devils, but man has let them back in. They were first called Christians at Antioch. But the world expects now for Christ to be world-like instead of us to be Christ-like and to follow God's path of marriage and righteousness. That's what he wants us to do, to follow him, not to follow the world. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Enough said of that. Back to keeping God's commandments in marriage. That's the title for today. Did I say that? I don't remember Keeping God's commandments in marriage. From the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 through 17, it says, Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. 
Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves over to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you, you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, another after that. And I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to abide, even as, as, as I, but they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Let not the husband put away his wife. That was Jesus answering that question. But to the rest I speak, I, not, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So separation is for reconciliation. It's not to play the field and start going on Facebook and finding past friends and lovers and whatever else is out there. It's for reconciliation. That's what he's talking about here. Starting again in verse 13. And the woman which hath an husband believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, and let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or what knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God has distributed every man as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all churches. You know, loving God in your, in your marriage is the solution because there are so many things that are different. There are so many problems that can arise. And it's a unity. Let not man put asunder. You know, there were even people in church that didn't think it was a good idea for Abby and I to be together. But God put us together. God put you people together with your husbands, your wives. Thank God for that. Thank God for his Holy Ghost. Because God knows what's, what we need, what's better for us than even we know for ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank God. From the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 7, verse 39, it says, The wife is bound by the husband. I'm sorry. The wife is bound by the law as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Keep God first, no matter what, only in the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So if you lose a spouse, it's okay to remarry, but only in the Lord. Because the world will draw you away. It will entice you for other people, other things outside of God. But we've got to keep it in God. We've got to keep God at the forefront of our life, the center of our life, all the time. Divorcing because of irreconcilable differences. But I would not have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried, care for the things that belong to the world, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married carried for the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Isn't that the truth? I want to do nothing more than please my wife, please my family. I give, I give all I have to her, to them. Why? Because they give it back to me. Because that's how you raise a family. God said to honor thy father and thy mother. And the father and the mother that raised me, and I honor them, what greater honor is, a, is for a parent to give away their children in marriage, especially when they know they're marrying the right person, 
they're marrying someone in the Lord. What a blessing that is. Can't wait to get rid of all my daughters. Give them all away. <laughs> Marriage requires a lot of work, dedication, love, Christ, love Christ, love again, forgiveness, vision, prayer. If it's all about me, it will be a failure. The union strengthens our bond together in Christ. Marriage doesn't diminish my walk with God. It enhances it because we worship and serve God together. If you love, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's his commandment for men to love his, their wives as Christ loved the church. So what can I do to put things asunder, like Jesus said, to split them up? I'm going to go to an Old Testament, and it's about King Solomon. King Solomon loved many strange women, and it took him down. 1 Kings 11, verse 1 through 4, it says, But Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of Pharaoh, the women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, and his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father. Marry outside of the faith, it can take you away from God. It sure can. Solomon's a perfect example. Things of the world can take away from God. Idolatry, the things of the world, alcohol, drugs, or just going your own way. I remember one time I said to my wife, I said, you know what? We're like two ships passing in the night. And it didn't go over too good. She was kind of upset at me. But I really thought about that. I said, you know, if we're going our own way and we're doing our own thing all the time, you know, where is God in our marriage? Where is anything in our marriage? So we had to turn it around. We had to get closer. We had to take some time out for each other, go places together. We had to seek the Holy Ghost together. And we began to pray tighter and stronger together. And our marriage got better. It happens all the time. It can happen in a day, in a week, in a month. We get busy. We get things, things you know, we're so busy doing things, taking care of the family, working the jobs. But we have to remember our vows before God in the, in the altar, the commitment that we made. We cannot let the devil and the world put, put us asunder. The world can draw us away. Envy can draw us away. Lust can draw us away. And cut our marriage asunder. Fix it. Fix your relationship with God. From the book of Romans, and this is uh, the last scripture I want to share and talk about from the Romans chapter, chapter 8. And I incorporate this into my family and into my marriage from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us in our marriage? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors because he first loved us. And that gives us the energy, the strength to carry on, to, to fight for our marriage. You know, Jesus fought for us. He fought the devil for us. And every day he fights to keep us. And he's a jealous God. Just like we're jealous of our wives. Well, Jesus is a jealous God. And he wants us to abstain from the world, to follow him, to seek him, and to do everything for him. To be that example to our wives. To pray with our wives and our family. To strengthen our family. To give all that we have. Just as he gave his life for us, we need to give our lives for them. God bless you. Thank you.